Hello everyone and welcome back to some more Warhammer Underworlds for the channel and for the first time in a little bit we have a brand new warband on the table at least in terms of what's been in the series so far and the horse murder ghosts are back they're going up against the Storm of Celestis they're called and they were in a starter box together so presumably they're kind of at odds with each other or meant to have a balanced fight we shall certainly see today so let's go look at the specifics for both sides. So here are the Storm of Celestis, it is a Stormcast Eternals warband, completely different to Far Striders, they'll have a completely different playstyle. They have these giant great bows, they're like Anor Londo archers. They want to find objectives, sit on objectives and snipe. But, there is a proviso, those giant bows of theirs can only be fired once per round each. So even if you activate one of them a second time, at best they can do a close range like butt with the, the end of the gun, the, the stock of the gun but they can only actually fire the explosive bolt in it once per round so that's their kind of downside their inspire condition is landing a hit with that fantastic crossbow attack range three uh two damage base and they have their pet griffon it's called sleek it just needs to land its basic attack to inspire as well it can also hand out guard tokens if an enemy attacks within two hexes of it once per round and i think that about covers it Totally different playstyle to Forest Riders, and as I say, they were in the same box as the Horus Murder Ghosts, aka the Wraith Creepers. So, well, for one, they're on each other's art a lot because of that, and two, they should potentially play into each other relatively in a, a, a fun, balanced way because they want to sit on objectives and just pepper shots in. The Horus Murder Ghosts want to get in their faces and murder them, so they'll be coming to them, so I can kind of see why they were paired together. Oh, it would help if I went over their names, of course, even though I'm going to completely forget them. They are led by Draken Celestis. He's the one who is high-ranking enough not to wear a helmet. Sleek, I mentioned. The other two are Aphis the Brave, which is that one. And then we have Melison Starsighted. That's a perfectly cromulent name. Who is this one over here who's kind of got her leg up on a, a bigger platform there. And we don't need to spend too much time on the Wraith Creepers, Dreppers Wraith Creepers, because we've seen them so many times. Very fun, very easy to use warband. They just want to murder things. We have Viceroy Drepper, we have Grodrick the Lance, we have Sir Hank Fell, and we have the Patrician, who at the end of every other activation of someone else, can move one of their team forwards towards the closest target. So they'll be doing that, and they want to murder people. With that, we'll get both sides set up. I'll be back at deployment after this quick word from my channel sponsor. This video is sponsored by Noble Knight Games. Check out the video description below for an affiliate link that will take you through to their store and it will help me out as well. Thanks. And we are back with deployment done and it will be Dripper's Wraith Creepers who will be going first in round one but we can quickly show you where everyone ended up. Celestis is right there next to Aphis and then down here is Millicent and then up there is Sleek. Drepper is over here, backed up by Gordrick the Lands. Then we have Sir Hackfell, and at the back is the Patrician just to help push them forwards. Objectives wise, we can just cover where what is. This is objective four, objective one, and objective five over here, and then we have two and three over here, like that. So, with that, let's jump in and see how the Celestis do on their first showing. So it was Grodrick the Lance who got the game started for Dreppers Wraith Creepers doing a charge action moving forward to two of his potential three hexes right into no man's land here. He's got range two on that gigantic lance of his and he struck into Draken Celestis who does only get one defense dice when he's not inspired. I'm not even sure that changes when he does. Either way, two dice looking for hammers and that was a whiff on both counts. So not a great start there for Grodrick. In the power phase, the Storm of Celestis played nothing the Wraith Creepers, however, played two different things, starting with Drifting Death, so like two friendly fighters pushed them one hex closer to the nearest enemy. Drepper himself and the Patrician both move forwards one towards the nearest enemy, which is Celestis. And then Somalint Beat was played because the Patrician is alive, so it's possible. Well, he's undead, but you know what I mean. Play this in your power step, minus one move from the enemy fighters in the next activation to a minimum of zero. So whoever is about to move, for Celestis's first activation is minus one moved, and they're not exactly fast. Well, it wasn't exactly a great start for the first activation on this side either. Melison Star Sighted activated. She should be short sighted, if anything. She did a charge action. Her move normally is three, 
reduced down to two because of that card there, but she only moved one hex because she started right there. She walked on to objective two, engaged her gigantic great bow into Sir Hackfell, range three, two dice looking for hammers, and also rolled disastrously absolutely nothing. So nothing done there, she does not inspire, but the attack has to succeed and that's the one time this round she is allowed to fire that weapon. Then if we just come over here real quick, at the end of the enemy power step the patrician is allowed to move one person forwards one and Draper himself is there. I can tell you this is going to be a real slow game if this continues. Second activation for Draper's Wraith Creepers, Sir Hackfell activated did a charge, moved two of his potential three hexes, attacked Celestis, needing hammers on two dice. Is that, that I think that might be the third roll in a row where it's a double support and a single support. It's, yeah, no defense roll required, it's just a miss and in the power step nobody playing anything. This is not a great start for either side. We got close to something happening there as Aphis the Brave activated second for Celestis, did a charge action, moved one hex onto objective three, and then engaged Sir Hackfell with his Great Bolt at range three. Uh, two dice looking for hammers and he got a hammer. He got an actual hit, but Sir Hackfell rolled a crit on his defense, cancelling it out and meaning he also does not inspire and can't shoot again this round. He can just batter people in close range. In the power step, however, they are playing something, finally. They're playing Channeled Step, which is a bit of an interesting one here. Choose one friendly fighter holding an objective token that is not within two hexes of an enemy fire. Place them on another objective token that's not within two hexes of an enemy fire and give them a move token. It's being used on him, so he is going on a magical journey, it seems, and is actually channeling, channeling himself down here. Now, he already has a charge token, so he doesn't really need a movement token, but that's where he's ended up. Finally stuff happened and all it took was Viceroy Dreper himself activating. He moved three hexes, he was here, he went one, two, three, passing through an occupied hex, which is important for what happened, and an occupied hex is just classified as a hex with a fighter in it, it doesn't say in the rulebook it has to be an enemy, so I think that is fine. Anyway, got into point blank range with poor Sleek the Griffhound, attacked and got a crit and a success, he was looking for hammers. They whiff their defense roll, so that's two damage of Sleek's three health, so he's almost out of there. But, as I was mentioning, they're scoring, so they're on the scoreboard with Ethereal Hunters. Score us immediately after an activation in which a friendly fighter made a charge action in which they moved through one or more blocked and or occupied hexes. He moved through the hex occupied by um, Grodrick there. That glory is then being spent on giving Dreper an upgrade. He's been given Memories of the Hunt, which is just plus one move. For him there which means he is movement four base now yeah because he hasn't inspired yet he didn't start within two hexes of an enemy oh some more stuff is actually happening one I forgot that sleek is being pushed back since he's only got range one on his attacks so driven back sorry so he is being driven back to force him to do a charge if he wants to try and get some revenge but they actually activated a trap card in a manner of speaking at the end of that enemy activation balanced strategy scores for Storm of Celestis. Score was immediately after an opponent's activation if your warband holds objectives two and four, and they do. Two, and then the one that was teleported to in the bottom right is four. So that's scored for two glory. Uh, in the power phase, they are spending both those glory on two upgrades, both being given to, to Celestis, plus one damage to his range one attack actions with Strength of Sigmar, which is a very funny picture. It's one of the horse ghosts getting his job battered off. And Reconqueror, which is plus one move and also reaction, where if they finish a move action, they can be pushed one hex as long as it's onto an objective token. So Celestis himself activated for their third activation, doing a charge action and just moving here next to... Which one was that? He is... Oh, that's Melison. And firing his great crossbow at point blank range, and that's important for what happened. One, it doesn't take the strength of Sigmar, so he's not plus one damage, which is a shame because it would have killed him. And he went into uh, Sir Hackfell and got one success with the hammer which was not blocked so that is two damage of his three health but it scores one glory for point blank which is what he went for over the kill which is scorbus immediately after an activation in which a friendly fighter made a successful range three plus attack action which targeted an adjacent enemy fighter so it's hard to miss a point blank range with an arrow that big i guess so he did score their third glory keeping them ahead 
denying a kill though, which might end up costing them. Well, there is one more thing happening at the end of that activation that glory they just earned is being spent on Reconsecrate and it's being given to Aphis the Brave, which is the one in the back line here down at the Objective 4. It is an action, which is interesting, it's, it's useful for scoring other cards they have. This fighter can only make this action if the fighter's in the same hex as an objective token. Pick a different objective token, you swap them, then you get given a charge token. So it's a way to bring an objective to you that you need. So, him down there, uh, focus now, there we go. He now has the re reconsecrate power. Last activation of round one for Dripper's Wraith Creepers had to be the Patrician since he didn't have a charge token and everybody else did. He just did a move behind his team there. And then in the power phase, Unending Pursuit is being played to push one friendly fighter one hex. And that is being used on Grodrick the Lance just to add some more pressure onto Celestis and give some support. And the final activation of round one for the Storm of Celestis had to be their loyal Griffhound Sleek, who did a charge action. They move a bit faster than everyone else. They're four. So from where he was driven back, he could go one, two, three, four. And even though he is surrounded by three enemies, since he's not long for this world anyway, he's got one health left, he went for a Hail Mary charge attack into Sir Hackfell. He rolls three dice. He's looking for swords. He got one sword, but a crit as well which was not blocked. Uh, Sir Hackfell was looking for dodges anyway, so he did actually take him out for one glory. No cards or anything scored off of it, but still pretty good. Oh, and because his attack landed, not that it's probably gonna matter much into round two, Sleek does inspire, just mentioning. His picture gets, look, his picture gets so fabulous on his inspired side, normal side. Inspired side. It's like he's in a shampoo commercial. This is going to be a super simple end phase for round one because neither side is scoring any additional cards whatsoever. So the scores are what they are as we go into round two. That means that the Storm of Celestis are ahead four to one. So they've got quite the lead. And we'll see if that continues as we go into the middle round. So at the top of round two, it is the Dreppers Wraith Creepers who are once again taking first activation. So I presume that Sleek is not going to be long for this world. Well, someone's going to go full John Wick after this. The Patrician activated, and I keep forgetting his inspire condition is slightly different to the rest of the Wraith Creepers. When he activates, if every other surviving member of his team is in enemy territory, that's his trigger condition. So he inspired when he activated and he attacked poor Sleek and just casually rolled three crits. There was no point in doing a defense roll because you can't beat three crits on two defense dice. At best you can counter two of them. So the poor doggo slash bird is annihilated for one glory. Um, no other additional cards scored off of the back of that though. Oh, that glory is immediately being spent to give Dripper another upgrade. He's been given bitter strength for plus one damage to his range one, range two attack action. So he's now doing three damage. I did warn them someone's going to go John Wick after their dog died. So, first activation for Team Celestis was the man himself. He's the only one of them that's inspired that's still alive, because Sleek was inspired. And opted just to use the heavy stock of his gun. That's his point blank, like, button them with the, the end of the crossbow, which is doing plus one damage because of strength of Sigmar. On his inspired side, he's rolling three dice looking for hammers, so he got a crit and a success, which were not blocked. Normally it only does two damage, but with that strength of Sigmar, it does three. So Grodrick the Lance went from alive, well, unalive, to very, very much dead for one glory. In the power step, I'll Cover You is being spent, or one glory is being spent rather, to give this to Millicent. It can go to any of the humans in the team. If this fighter has not yet made a Thunderhead Arrow Great Head, uh, the Thunderhead Great Bow attack action in this round, each time a friendly fighter within three hexes is a target of attack action, this fighter is supporting to give them a bit of defense. And that is the one that is next to uh, Celestis, right there. Oh, in that same power step, Heart Piercer is being played by the Wraith Creepers. It has to be played in the opponent's power step. The first range two attack action made by a friendly fighter in the next activation has Cleek. Dripper himself activated second for the Wraith Creepers, doing a charge onto Objective 3, mostly just in case of denying anything potentially related to objectives for the other side, and did that range 2 stabbing motion into Celestis. Two dice, looking for hammers, he got them. Uh, Celestis did roll two successes, however, because of that Heart Piercer card giving cleave to this charge action, both those 
are denied. He would have had to have rolled a crit, so the attack actually got through. Normally two damage, up to three because of better strength, and scores piercing blow, which is what they were looking for. Scores immediately after an activation in which a friendly fire's attack action with cleave was successful, and Heart Piercer gave him cleave. So, pretty nasty hit there. Keeping in mind he didn't have a charge token because he attacked at point blank and didn't need to charge, uh, Celestis could activate again, so he did. This time he did charge. He retreated a little bit to get out of range 2 of the potential threats and fired his range 3 great bow, arrow shot, whatever, for this turn into Drepper. Got a crit, however, Drepper got a crit in his defense, so nothing there at all. In the power phase, lightning flare, lighting, oh no, it is lightning, lightning flare is being used. It's not really to do anything, it's just showing it off as a card because it means that you have to be within two hexes to attack um, the Storm of Celestis next round, but Drepper's Wraith Creepers are incapable of attacking from beyond range two anyway, just showing it off as a card we haven't seen yet. Oh, the Patrician went for the kill, moving four on his inspired side right next to Celestis. Three dice looking for swords, he got two successes. Once again though, Celestis rolled two successes and there ain't no cleave this time, so it does no damage and he survives. Second last activation of the round for Storm of Celestis and it was Millicent who fired her great bow for the one time she's allowed this round. Got a crit! Two shields again on defense dice, I, I don't get it, but the patrician needed dodges anyway. It hits him for two damage, however he is being driven back into his lethal hex here, so it's actually three damage. However, he still survives because on his inspired side he has four health, but Millicent does inspire as well because she's landed that great bow shot. Final action in round two for the Wraith Creepers was a cycling of objective cards, draw one, discard one just hoping for something that they can actually score or have already done the criteria for. And final activation of the second round was Aphis the Brave who just did a movement action to walk off of objective 4 over here to here just so he can get into where the fighting is happening. Um, he doesn't have anything that requires him to stay on that objective back there plus he has that re-consecrate if he wants to switch one later. So he's just trying to get in there to help his teammates next round and that takes us to the end phase. So in this end phase there is something being scored, a Bulwark against the Dark is scoring for a whole one glory for the Storm of the Celestis. Scorbus in the end phase of each surviving friendly fire has one or more upgrades. Melison has I'll Cover You, Aphis has Reconsecrate, and Celestis has Strength of Sigmar plus Reconqueror. So they all have at least one upgrade and that takes them to a total of six glory. So six glory playing three, just three for the Wraith Creepers as we go into the setup for the third and final round. So at the top of the third and final round, the Storm of Celestis have finally won the priority roll and will be taking first activation and I can tell you for sure they're going to be trying to murder the Patrician just to get him out of there. Yep, first activation was Celestis himself. He did a charge kind of backwards to get some support from Millicent here. Engaged the Patrician, got two successes. Only one success over here, so the Patrician is out of there for one glory. Two glory in total are being spent in the power phase on upgrades. Melison is being given Cool Head, it's a unique upgrade to just them, no one else is allowed to have it. So they're the one on objective 2 currently. You can reroll one die in this fighter's attack rolls, which is pretty nice. And Aphis the Brave is being given Long Range, since he's kind of behind everyone. And it's just flat plus one to his Thunderhead Great Bow attacks, so that means they're range 4. Last man standing is Drepper, and he did not choose Peace, Peace was never an option. He did a charge. He went adjacent to Celestis because he was being counted as supported by Melisin since she hasn't fired, uh, no matter how close he was, like if he was ranged to it would still apply. So he attacked, he rolled nothing on his first roll, but then played methodical attacks, which means if you whiff you get to do another one. That was a lucky timed draw between rounds there. He rolled two successes on his second attempt, it was not blocked, so Celestis is out of there. That is one glory for that, but also one glory for Unstoppable Death, which is just taking someone out as part of a charge action. So that got them up to five. Oh, in that same power step, since it has to be in the opponent's power step, Aetheric Channeling is being played. Well, I think someone's going to try for some revenge. Play this only in your opponent's power step. The first range three plus attack action made by a friendly fighter in the next activation has either a plus one die, cleave, or ensnare, depending on what you want. So that is going to be for whoever shoots a dropper now. So Aphis activated and fired that great bow of his, took one extra die just to improve his chances of getting a crit, got one success and a crit, 
no crits on Dreper's side, so that is Thunk 2 damage into him. He's got range too, so there's no point driving him back. But that does mean that Aphis the Brave finally landed a great bow hit, so he has now also inspired. It hasn't come up yet, it might do with Melison's turn, but on their inspired side, all of the Storm of Celestis get additional bonuses if they're currently sitting on objective tokens. So Melison is on one, so that means she gets plus one die to her attack actions, as long as she's on an objective. And I think on their uh, on their inspired side, they don't get shoved off objectives. Maybe that's just Celestis himself. Yeah, she, she doesn't have it, but I think he did. Not that, yeah, he couldn't be driven back. Dripper is just going down swinging, or stabbing, I guess. Did an attack action into Melisin and completely whiffed. You'll notice there's a third die there, though. That's because he played Stuff of Nightmares. Choose one enemy fighter within two hexes of a friendly fighter. Roll one die, and if you get a hammer, you deal one straight damage to them because you're messing with their mind. But he whiffed that as well, which is par for the course so far, really. And it's just a straight up brawl over here. Melison activated. She tried to fire her great bow into Drepper. It would have killed him. But even with that reroll from, well, one die reroll from Coolhead, she whiffed on a total of three dice, technically. So good job. Man, and the trend continues. Drepper activates, tries to stab Melison, and rolls two double supports. What is wrong? It, these dice belong in Fallout Wasteland Warfare with how much they're coming up with essentially crit fails. This is ridiculous, that's another just absolutely nothing. Final activation for the game, Melison activated again. Just tried to do a crushing kick is her melee attack. She doesn't use the actual great bow as a bludgeon weapon. Still two dice looking for hammers with knockback one. She whiffed, she got a reroll from Cool Head. Whiffed again, unbelievable. And too little too late, right at the end of the game, Viceroy Dripper lands a decent hit, getting a crit and a success, it was not blocked and that does a total of three damage doesn't take her out she has four he is going to drive her back she's not immune to it as we just discussed on the off chance her holding that objective might have scored something in the end phase and that takes us to the end phase to see how this all played out and so at the end of the game both sides are scoring in the end phase inevitable advance scored for dripper's wraith creepers because every surviving fighter has a move or a charge token he has a charge token and for Storm of Celestis, minus the Celestis, Shining Heroes also scores for one, so just kind of overwriting each other. Scorpus in the end phase of each surviving friendly fire is inspired, which they are. Worth knowing, had they killed Drepper, not only would they have got one for the kill of him, in this end phase they would have scored a further three for Zone of Banishment, which is no enemies in their territory, and Lightning Strike just for killing the leader. So they would have got well ahead. Such as it is though, the game is ending with the Storm of Celestis on 2, 4, 6, 8 and Drepper's Wraith Keepers on 6. So they lost by 2. And so the two last surviving members of the Storm of Celestis stand triumphant. They have won on their first showing. We'll probably see them again next time against some other warband. Again, they were in the start set together with Drepper's Wraith, Wraith Creepers so it is supposed to be a pretty even fight. It felt that way, but it also felt ridiculous with how much both sides were just absolutely rolling bupkis just fail after fail with rerolls fail 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 this would have been much bloodier i think had some of those hits landed or if certain cards had been drawn earlier in the game like i think both sides have a card that lets them either attack when they die or get a second attack if they miss the first attack anyway thank you very much for watching please do remember to show your support if you are one of the few people who watch warhammer underworlds liking the video commenting on it that all helps if you can go above and beyond to support the channel, also becoming a channel member just helps me out in general. Or checking out the channel sponsor via the affiliate link. If you pick something up for yourself, I get compensated. And I believe they carry Underworlds along with basically everything else I cover on the channel. Or you can press the thanks button. Either way, thank you for watching. See you next time. Ta-ta for now.